230, 250, 280SL comments. Some of you left some great comments on the 230, 250, and 280SL video, which I thought were worth noting. But I think that the first one that really came up that I thought was interesting was from a, U from a YouTube handle named Andrew Bradbury, which probably is not his real name because everybody probably hates this guy in real life. Uh, Andrew said that he used to have a 280SL. It got 12 miles per gallon at rev tie on the highway and it wasn't very stable. And then he said that people are probably going to lose interest in classic cars and values are going to plummet at some point in the future. Now, there are people in life that will, uh, you know, ultimately like this guy, they'll say a Nissan Micra or Ford Monday or, or Monday or better, more usable cars. And to his point, that's why I drive a 300D every day because it represents the ultimate practical usable car. But... Uh, you know, and if you're watching this channel, you probably already understand this. Probably 90% of people that walk this earth have absolutely no connection to anything mechanical. They live passionless, dull lives. When their printer breaks, they buy a new one instead of trying to figure out what's wrong with it. When their car needs an oil change, they go to a Jiffy Loop. When it's time to buy food at the grocery store... They drive their car, they're like an appliance, they don't enjoy it. When it's time to go to work, they sit in their car for 18 hours, you know, a week in traffic, reading a book, spilling their coffee on the center console. And um, for the 10% of us that love classic cars, I think we all know that this hobby is fully sustainable. And the epitome of this hobby is, is centered around cars like the Pagoda SL. That are just absolutely timeless. While a Ford Mondeo and a uh, Nissan Micro, whatever piece of junk this guy drives, uh, might actually seem like decent cars, nobody will ever find you cooler or more attractive because you're driving one. In fact, people will probably think that you're boring at best or a loser at worst. Uh, second, you know, fuel efficiency and low revving engines in the highway are not necessarily everything. Personally, I love hearing the blat of the M130 engine when I shift it into third gear at 5,500 RPM. You know, there's no universal law that says you have to drive an economy compact. And until there is, which hopefully there won't be, I, you know, I don't, I don't think they'll care. But the, the other thing is that sophisticated people tend to be interested in classic cars, even if they don't necessarily own one. And so this, this, this Andrew guy, you know, whoever he is, uh, probably speaks to his lack of sophistication and probably his lack of intelligence that he only appreciates crappy European market compact cars that have absolutely no style. Much like the person that thinks that Cristiano Ronaldo is a better player than Messi because he's bigger and stronger uh, and he looks, he, he, he looks the part, uh, it is very easy to look at things like the fuel economy figures or the quietness of these modern compact cars and just assume that they're a better car than a uh, than like a Pagoda SL or a similar Mercedes. Really, sort of like Messi, the Pagoda's beauty is in its details, its finesse, its uh, good looks, its attention to build quality and detail its excellent stance and perfectly engineered motor that doesn't depend on a computer to accomplish so many technically uh, technically impossible things at the time. And, um, uh, you know, if you don't like classic cars or you think that classic Mercedes are going to plummet in value, I just think you're an unsophisticated idiot. That's all. Uh, <laughs> now, classic cars may go up and down in value, but we've seen in the last recession that they're seen as a safe place to store assets. And when we have another global recession, people will, will probably start holding on to cars like the 113 again as an alternative means of stashing their money, which could depreciate overnight to nothing, much like it did in the early 1970s when the dollar crashed. Uh, anyway, uh, some other comments were absolutely more encouraging and more exciting. A lot of people noted that the 113, uh, especially when compared to the 107, is like a beautiful girlfriend that may not always be reliable. Now, this isn't true 
the 113 is perfectly reliable just takes a lot of uh work sometimes to get there so this is sort of like dating uh, a person who's very attractive that might have a few psychological or fitness issues but if you work through everything you'll typically be promised a good result i've never seen a pagoda that didn't need a ton of work to get right but generally when you get them right they stay right and they're they're pretty good for the long run uh the the 107 just has a lot more power and is a much quieter easier to maintain cheaper to purchase cheaper to repair car uh anyway uh, and then one last user, I think, was um, had asked if the 230SL had a four main bearing engine. It actually is a five main bearing engine. All the rest of the Pagoda SLs had seven main bearing engines. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, please tap the bell for notifications. Leave your comments below. And if you're some passionless twit like Andrew, or no, wait, I should say a passionless wanker who prefers a Ford Mondeo or a Nissan Micra or some stupid ugly compact car then you probably shouldn't be watching this channel because i'm going to make a fool out of you cheerio